Hey, what's up guys and gals? It's the Tyrant here. Happy Saturday to you. Hope everyone's having a great weekend so far. And welcome back to my weekly Q&A session where you guys ask the questions and I give you the answers. If you'd like to submit a question for next week and have it possibly picked, all you need to do is ask your question in the comments below, label it Q&A, or you can hit me up on Twitter at Mythic Tyrant. A link to my Twitter feed can be found in the description below. And of course, if you're a premium member on my Patreon site, then of course you can ask in our community Discord as well. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to talk a little bit later about uh, my, big, my big surprise reveal this week, and I'll get into that afterwards. But let's go ahead and jump right into the Q&A. Our first question comes from Chris Carbine. And Chris Carbine asks, are you serious, MT? This sucked. This sucks. This was neat, but this sucks. What the hell? When did you become such an edgelord? Not even really sure what that means. Halo 4 is better. Halo 2 sucks. What the hell? Okay, so to put that into context for you, that wasn't actually meant to be a question entered in, but it's something that I've been getting a lot lately. For those of you who don't know, uh, I've been updating my uh, Halo rank list. A couple of years ago, I came out with a video called Halo Time Travel and Evolution, where I ranked all of the major Halo titles from the ones that I liked the least to my absolute favorite. I did little mini reviews for them all in one video. This was made a little before Halo 5 came out. And so after Halo 5 came out, I did a review for that. It, it wasn't a conventional review. Basically, I uh, did sort of a tribute to Mr. Plinkett from Red Letter Media. And so definitely check that out if you want to. Most people I know who watched it really loved it. Uh, but the thing of it is, I've been going back and doing individual videos for all the Halo games so that each time a new Halo title is released, I can do my review for it and add it to the series. So essentially, uh, when I'm done with this, You'll have all the individual videos out there, and then I'm going to mash them into one. And then when Halo 6 comes out, I'll do my review for that one after I've had a chance to marinate on it for a little while. And then I'll also put that into the, uh, uh, the ranking list. So here's the thing. I've been getting a number of questions lately, or a number of comments saying, oh, Tyron has changed. You know, he's always critical about the Halo community. You know, it's all different now. I want to put this to bed. So for the record, I'm going to say, state that my uh, position on all the Halo games out there in terms of whether or not I liked them and where they fell on my rank list has never changed. Seriously. Never. Uh, you know, believe it or not, I still feel the same way about Halo 5 that I did when it first came out. They've improved the game since then, but it still has the same spot on my list. And as does Halo 2. People are always surprised to hear that I don't really care for the game that much, but I've always felt that way. And just to sort of, uh, I guess, sort of nail this down. Actually, I will say that I have changed position on two games. When I was doing my uh, time travel video a couple of years ago, I had to figure out a number one spot on my list because I loved Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 3 so much, I didn't know which one I loved more. So I sat down and analyzed them and ended up switching uh, my results at the last minute. And you know what? I still stand by that. So... Uh, that, that's the only time, but in terms of games that I've loved versus games that I didn't like so much versus the games that sort of fell somewhere in the middle, that's always been the same. To sort of give you an example here uh, of my Halo 2 uh, dislike, uh, we'll, we'll just go ahead and call it that. Earlier this, year, earlier this year, some of you may remember that I held contests to give away free copies of Halo Wars 2 Ultimate Edition leading up to the game's release. I ended up giving away five copies, and every what I did was I posted a quiz, a 10-question quiz, that had Halo-related questions. And whoever got all the answers right got entered into a raffle and got a chance to uh, get their free copy of Halo Wars 2 Ultimate Edition. The last week, though, the final week of the contest, it was all Mythic Tyrant-related questions. And the last question on that uh, list was what's Mythic Tyrant's least favorite Halo game? And just for fun, I decided to see if I could Google it. I put in, I went to Google and said, what is Mythic Tyrant's least favorite Halo game? And sure enough, Halo 2 was the first thing that came up. It was such common knowledge even then that it was something you could Google. So you're saying, okay, that's not good enough. This happened only if this happened just this year, right? That's not, that's, that doesn't count. Okay, so we're gonna go back a couple of years when I did the original version of this series where it was just one video called Halo Time Travel and Evolution. Back then, Halo 2 was still at the bottom of my list. And the thing of it is, I was much harsher towards that game in that review than I was in the current one. I just wasn't as detailed back then. 
but you're saying that's still not enough. That was only a couple of years ago. You've been in the market for a while, Tyrant. Okay, so let's dial it back to five years ago when I did my Halo 2 Legendary walkthrough. I did it reluctantly, might I add, but the only reason I eventually decided to do it wasn't just because people kept asking me to, it was because I'd already done all the other Halo games aside from Halo Wars, and I was like, this is all that's left, I might as well do it. And when I started doing it, I even, I even got approached by 343 personally, and they're like, we're not going to lie, we're surprised because we know how much you hate the game. You know what? We're pleasantly surprised, but we're still surprised. So even 343 knew how much I disliked Halo. In fact, Bungie did as well. Let's just say that's not far enough back for you because, again, I've been around longer than that uh, in the Halo community. If you go back almost 10 years, 10 years, almost a decade, when I did my first Halo 3 Mythic walkthrough, my first publicized walkthrough ever, which actually launched my publicity in the Halo community, I tore Halo 2 apart in that guide and said that I honestly considered not getting Halo 3 originally because I was so disappointed by Halo 2. But I was, of course, glad that I did get Halo 3. Made me happy. Definitely made up for Halo 2, in my opinion. Now, of course, this isn't a takeaway to say that you should hate Halo 2 as well. It's just my personal opinion. And, of course, I've always loved Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 3 and all the other games that have come out since then always fell somewhere in the middle. That's all there is to it. There's one game that I dislike, there's two games that I love, and the other three just, you know, fall somewhere in between. That's always been my stance, and I just wanted to make sure everyone knew that because it seems like people get really worked up when someone has a different opinion than their own, and it blows me away because I look at this and I'm like, holy crap. People look at, you know, a video game, because keep in mind, this is just a video game, people, or a video game franchise, and they, they rank it up there with religion and politics. And I'm like, really? It's that important to you? That's crazy. They're, at least it's crazy to me. You know, when I was a kid, my favorite game ever was Super Mario Brothers. That was the first video game I ever played. And throughout all of elementary school, that was my game series right there. Except for Mario 2. I guess sequels don't tend to do well in the video game franchise sometimes. But Mario 3, in my opinion, is honestly one of the best games ever made. And then, of course, when Super Mario World came out for Super Nintendo, that was awesome. We actually got to ride a dinosaur called Yoshi. That was really cool. And then, of course, some time passed, about five or six years. Now it was more than that, maybe about seven. Then Resident Evil was my new thing. That's what I loved to play back then. I was so hooked in that series. And then when Halo Combat Evolved came out, Halo was the new thing. Now, granted, I've stuck with Halo longer than any other franchise, but I ask you this, 25 years from now, is Halo still going to be your number one thing? Is it going to still be an industry leader? My guess is probably not. You know, 25 years is a long time. You know, Halo might still be out there in some way, shape, or form. Maybe they could, that, uh, that cartoon route where they have uh, Halo and, or Master Chief and Friends from that uh, old video a uh, long time ago. That came out when Halo 3 did. But, you know, it's probably not going to have the same impact then. In fact, arguably, it doesn't have the same impact now. So, uh, you know, I ask you, you know, just don't, I mean, be a fan. That's cool. I'm a Halo fanboy myself, but I'm not always going to be one. You know, I'm sure something else is going to come along in the future. I'll still always have fond memories of Halo. I'll still probably make content about it years from now, or at least that's the plan. But, uh, you know, eventually something else is going to come along that I enjoy too. Arguably, that could be given to Titanfall. You know, of course, they co sort of screwed the pooch with the first one, not having a real campaign with it. But the campaign for Titanfall 2, in my opinion, was my game of the year for 2016. It was that awesome. It narrowly bested uh, Doom 2016. So there's a lot of great content coming out there. We don't know when Halo is going to lose some steam or lose its. Yeah, we don't know when Halo is going to lose its steam. We don't know when Halo is going to lose its drive. Do we really think it's going to be out 25 years from now? Or do we think there's going to be another, uh, you know, game that just shatters records and just blows away expectations? You know, it just time will tell. But if I look at the history of the market, you know, something else is eventually going to come along. So don't get so passionate about your game franchise that you start making enemies. Again, be nice. I've taken a much tougher stance on trolling. I want this to be a friendly community. I want people to be happy here. So that's all I have to say about that. That's uh, my stance on video games in general. That was longer than I thought it would be. But I appreciate the question at least being brought up. So I appreciate that, Chris, and thank you.
Our next question comes from Dale Lee Mixon. It's always good to hear from Dale. And Dale asks, do you think Halo Wars 2 art style will carry over into Halo 6? Truth is, it depends. If the Banished are going to be in Halo 6, it possibly could. Uh, but, you know, it, I'm still not entirely sure how the art style from an RTS game would transfer over to an FPS game. It could do that, uh, but I think art style is one of those things that I haven't really paid a lot of attention to, to be honest with you. I know for a lot of people, it's a big deal. And if it is to you, more power to you. Everyone likes something different, I guess. But I think it's... I know that 343 is taking you know cues from the reception that Halo Wars 2 got, especially in the artistic style department. And you never know. You know, it's certainly possible. So thanks for asking, Dale. I appreciate it. Our next question comes from Slice of Orange. I love oranges. And Slice asks, how do you think the classic art style can make an under understandable return to the mainstream Halo? This is a good question. So since we're still on the topic of art style here, uh, I had this talk with uh, Hidden Xperia, sort of, back when we did our video together a couple of weeks ago. And something interesting was brought up. We talked about the Covenant and how they could speak English in Halo 2 and 3, but they couldn't in Halo 4. And he brought up an interesting concept that maybe it was because uh, the Covenant that we see in Halo 4 and 5 weren't from the original Covenant, they were from the Storm Covenant. So maybe they never learned to speak English. And that made differences in other areas too. You know, in my opinion, that's probably the reason why you see different art styles. Again, that's just me. I haven't seen it canically. But because they're a different faction, they have different armor and they have different uh, ranking systems and so forth. So that's sort of the way I justify it. So to answer your question, Slice, I would say the only real way to inject classic art styles is to have a Halo game that takes place uh, either in the original trilogy, somewhere within that area, or at some time before that. Uh, moving forward, as long as we're dealing with the Storm Covenant or the Banished, I don't think you're gonna see anything classic. But if we go back in time a little bit, I think that would be the key for you. So I hope that answers your question, Slice of, slice of Orange. I wanted to say Slice of Dice, but I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Our next question comes from Mudkip454. Always good to see you, Mud. And Mud asks, do you think Halo would make a good alternate ending game, similar to Black Ops 2, where your actions affect the ending. You know, it's this is really good. So I've talked about this before, about a cool way to do Halo 6 would be, uh, as you move forward in the game, you have the option to choose what, what mission you want to go to. Like, let's just say you're on one of the Halo rings and you complete a mission, and Arbiter says, oh, I need you on Installation 0... Uh, three or something like that and then Captain Lasky's like but wait we still have uh, stuff to do on Meridian or, or whatever and so you get to choose which one you go on and the campaign sort of evolves as you make choices and depending on which choices you make depends on the ending of the game that way if you're not satisfied with the ending you go another route and try that instead that way you basically write the story yourself I think that it would be uh, something that would be a great idea, Mudkip. I hope that's something they'll consider. It would make the campaign experience a lot bigger. It would make the Halo universe for that game a lot bigger. It would give people a, more, a, a much more genuine sandbox experience, allowing to be able to you know go to different places in the galaxy, being able to customize your story. I think that there's, there's a lot of potential if they decide to go that route. Uh, they've been creative in Halo games before and changed up the formula. I don't see why they can't now. So, Mudkip, that's a great question. I appreciate it. Thank you. Our next question comes from Shadow King. And Shadow King asks, if the Halo 2 E3 demo came to MCC, would you play it and start liking Halo 2? PS343 said they are thinking about doing it. I haven't seen any information on that. I mean, it's possible they will, but uh, I, I don't. E even if they do it, would they do it right is the question. You know, when they did Halo 2 Anniversary, people weren't overly thrilled about it. Uh, personally, I was okay with Master Chief Collection, but a lot of people weren't. And they made some, you know, pretty compelling arguments for it. I tell you, I don't know if I would like it because it's a little too late that that ship has sailed, but I would probably enjoy playing the demo. I think that would be a fun thing to do. And if they do release it, I don't know when a good time would be since, you know, Halo 2 anniversary is already come and gone. But it could be something cool to play for Halo's 20th anniversary. And I mean, Halo Combat Evolved 20th anniversary since it's coming up in just uh, about four years from now. So I hope it's something that I see. It would be great if they did it. So yeah, go for it, 343 Industries. 
Our next question comes from Lance Older. And Lance Older asks, what do you think on the possibility of another Halo 3 ODST styled spinoff? Oh, I think it is possible. You know, I mentioned in previous videos, I would love to see Buck's journey from going or, or back when he was an ODST. Maybe he went on some critical missions. I know it's probably filled in and outside the games, which I don't really care. But, you know, we could see his journey from becoming a Spartan from an ODST and all the decisions that led to it. I think that would be a good idea for a spinoff. And what do you think, Lance? Let me know in the comments below, dude. Our next question comes from I Am Superman. And I Am Superman asks, how old are you? Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm 32 with a birthday coming up. End of question. <laughs> Our next question comes from Slender Star. Always good to hear from you, Slendy. And Slender Star asks, Tyrant, do you think that after Halo 6, we will get to play as the Spartan 5 program? Working for Oni, hunting terrorists, but then the Covenant returns with their religion based around Cortana and having to team up with the insurrectionists to stop the returned enemy forces. That's actually not a bad idea, Slender. Uh, that's probably... Uh, here's sort of how that would have to play out though. They've already explicitly said that they don't want you fighting humans in any of the games. It just wouldn't be Halo if you did it. It would be Call of Duty. But if that was the backstory that they had to team up with the Insurrectionists, maybe that would be the opening cutscene or something like that. I think possibly something like that could work. But even if they don't team up with the Insurrectionists, there are so many events that play out in the book Halo The Fall of Reach that could easily be made into a video game. And it's something that I hope they would consider in the future since I'd rather them do games that took place before the current trilogy rather than trying to just continue getting more bizarre as time goes on. So I hope that's something they'll consider and that's a great subject, Slender, thank you. Our next question comes from Kenneth Lindsay. And Kenneth asks, what do you think about adding more vehicles from previous Halo games? I miss the Elephant, Spectre, and Falcon so much. I really just want all the vehicles in one game because I also love the Revenant, Hornet, Prowler, and ch or Chopper, Troop Transport, Warthog, and Gun Goose with machine guns. Time this adds so much variety in Halo, or yeah, this adds so much variety and Halo vehicular combat has been lacking the past couple of games. This would also be perfect for Invasion to return. Um, I think that it would be cool to see some vehicles return to answer your question, but there are some that, are, that in my opinion, were just duds. I didn't think the Revenant was very useful at all. Uh, no one really ever used the Transport Warthog, at least not many people did. Maybe at first because it was something new, but I looked at the Civilian Warthog from Reach. That was a, you know, a waste. The uh, Transport Warthog in Halo 3, I never used that. I tried to because the concept sounded cool where you could load up your soldiers with uh, fuel rod guns, have them in the back and have this like awesome Uber vehicle. But at the end of the day, I just enjoyed using a regular Warthog. So it really wasn't that big of a thing. Uh, Falcon, I could see that returning. I haven't seen any uh, real human vehicles in, in the newer Halo games. I guess maybe the the new one that they have in Halo 5. I, I keep forgetting what it's called. I think it's based off the Sparrowhawk from Halo Wars. But, it's, I mean, that's sort of like the Hornet, kind of. So, I, I, I sort of agree with you that maybe some of the older vehicles, like the Elephant, yes, I agree with that. I'd love to see the Elephant brought back. Even though we also have the Mammoth now, so don't forget we have that too. But ultimately, I, I just don't want it to get too cluttered because they've already done that with weapons. They basically added like everything in there, uh, which works fine for multiplayer. And if you're going to do the whole rec pack system thing, I guess that kind of works. But for campaign, the more weapons you have, the harder it is to find ammo for those weapons. Trust me, I've played Halo SPV3, even though I love that game, by the way. So to answer your question, I'd rather just see refinement in the current vehicles. Maybe bring back a couple of old ones like the Brute Chopper if, if the Brutes just happen to come back uh, in the next major Halo title. But for the most part, you know, I'd rather move forward than backwards. But that's still a good question, Kenneth. Thank you. And our final question of the week, our star question comes from my, my premium guy, Seafunk99. Good to see you, Seafunk. And Seafunk asks, do you think it's possible for Microsoft to release Halo SPV3 on Xbox One and maybe the Windows Store? And can you or, and po can possibly add features like co-op, multiplayer, firefight, and even better graphics? Who I wouldn't mention that last one to Masters. I don't think he's going to like that too much. But uh, so we actually talked about this a little bit in the Premium Discord. 
which again, if you're a, if you're a patron, you become a member of our Discord, so definitely check it out. If, if you're not already a member, of course it helps the site too. Anyway, back to the question. So here, here's the thing, it's not impossible. It depends on the company, of course, because there are some companies out there like Activision that don't even want you to mod the game to begin with. And then there, there is, of course, Microsoft. Back when it was in Bungie's hands, they were very lenient about it. In fact, when Rooster Teeth started doing Red versus Blue, they encouraged it. Probably didn't realize how big of a sensation it was gonna become and how they might end up losing money off of that. Um, and so I'm not sure how it worked. When, I, when you look at Rooster Teeth, their entire brand is based off of Halo. You know, they've created new series since then, like Ruby, for example, but uh, I'm sure there's some sort of deal going on between them and Microsoft. I'm not sure how they split the profits exactly, but I'm sure they have some sort of a settlement in that department. So they continue to make uh, Red versus Blue and Microsoft somehow benefits from it. How exactly, I'm not sure. I could see a similar thing done with Halo. I mean, keep in mind, remember the game DayZ? You know, that was a, a mod. That was a mod that came from a different game. And so now that company, but the you know original company was like, yeah, that's cool. But now the people who made the mod are considering releasing their own game for it. And I don't know how that, you know, if that con or if it's a conflict of interest or not, but it seems like it's going forward. I don't know if it's already come out yet. I haven't really been keeping up with it. But uh, Microsoft could go that route if they want to. It would add a little extra money. But I'm not sure that Masters himself, even if Microsoft would agree to it, I'm not sure Masters would want to work on it simply because, you know, I, you know, he's a good friend of mine. He's a very smart, intelligent, and very talented individual. And I can tell you that based on what he's told me, he's ready to move on from Halo SPV3. It's something that he's worked on for a long time. The, uh, that particular project's been going on for nearly a decade now, probably over a decade at this point. And he just wants to move on to a different project. And I understand that from the perspective of a creative mind. You know, this is a little, uh, little Easter egg for you, I, or a little piece of trivia. I've been a book writer since I was seven years old, and I started writing novels when I was in middle school. And I've gotten a couple copyrighted, but I haven't published any of them yet because I'm just, I guess, too lazy. But um, I understand the feeling of once you have that satisfaction of completion, you want to move on to something different and, and uh, you want to create a new work of art that represents you and just you know how creative your mind can be for people to enjoy. I know he's ready to move on to something else. I'm not really sure he wants to revisit the SPV3 thing. If it was something Microsoft would be willing to do, it's something I would definitely buy. Uh, I'd love to play that on an Xbox One. I'd love to see how it runs on an Xbox One compared to PC. You know, Gearbox, you know, they didn't do the best job at the PC port. You know, it takes a lot of hardware to run, or at least back then, it took some pretty hefty hardware to run Halo PC. So it might actually run better on the Xbox One. But at the same time, you know, it's, there's a lot of gray area there. If, if Microsoft approached him, I think it would be uh, a more likely option for Microsoft to basically hire the folks from the CMT community to come work for them. We see something similar with uh, Resident Evil 2 Remastered. So if you don't know already, they're planning on remaking Resident Evil 2, just like they did with Resident, the original Resident Evil game. And someone out there, another team of individuals, was in the process of doing their own project very much like that. And what Capcom did is they hired them. They said, okay, here's the deal. You need to botch the project, but in exchange, you can come work for us to build the same project. So I think it's a possibility, but I think it would be more likely that Microsoft themselves would just hire them, and they should. These are excellent folks here. The, the gentleman who created the soundtrack, genius, and of course, Masters himself. The, guy, the main guy behind it all is an absolute genius. I love his work. You know, I've certainly you know, uh, showcased SBB SBB3 quite a bit on this site. It's a game that I love to play. I thought they worked very hard on it, and it, it shows, you know? I'm really, I'm really excited to have this game finally out, all 10 missions. And so, uh, basically what I'm saying is, if it ever did happen, I would absolutely love to buy it. Uh, but practically speaking, I don't think it would happen, not just because I don't think it's something Microsoft would want to do, especially since technically it's already based off of Halo, which is a property from Microsoft. But even then, 
you know, it becomes a very convoluted thing. You know, okay, they're show showcasing a Halo game that wasn't made by them or overseen at all by them, for that matter. So it's, it's a pipe dream, but it's one I can certainly understand, and hell, if it ever happened, I'd be the first in line to buy it. So that's a great question, Cfunk99, thank you. And that is our Q&A for this week, but before we leave, I do want to bring up something else. So as most of you know at this point, yesterday I officially launched my Halo 5 Mythic Difficulty walkthrough. For those of you who are new to the site and aren't familiar with the concept, Mythic Difficulty is sort of a term that I came up with about 10 years ago. It's a term that Bungie adopted and 343 also adopted. And essentially what it means is legendary all skulls on, no saves, no deaths, scoring enabled where applicable, and of course you have to do each mission as a single segment run. So. Uh, I first did this with Halo 3, then I did it with Halo 3 ODST, uh, then Reach, then 4. But when I got to 5, I guess I felt a little unmotivated. Uh, it even took me a while to do my Halo 5 Legendary walkthrough, which should have been done within a week, to be honest with you. But I didn't have a lot of motivation for it. It was for a number of reasons, uh, but of course one of the main ones was that this was a, Halo 5 came out only a few months after my accident. And... Uh, you know, I really wasn't in a good place, to be honest with you. I didn't really tell a lot of people that, but you know, I was, I was uh, going through uh, some periods of depression, and uh, so I just wasn't as motivated. And of course, the following year, I started getting all these doctor's appointments and people trying to figure out the best way to fix me. And we, you know, they, they did the best they could, but really, at the end of the day, just, you know, I'm still crippled, I'm still legally blind. So it, it has, <laughs> it's even worse that one of the skulls is called a blind skull. So. Uh, I did my first uh, guide for Halo 5 Legendary, and it just it didn't really seem to pick up a lot of momentum. And so I didn't really know what to do. I didn't know how to proceed. And finally, towards the end of 2016, I started getting more of a vibe to it, more of a kick. And I started, you know, doing a few more guides, trying to put my uh, site on more of a regular schedule. And then 343, you know, approached me later and they've just, they've treated me with, you know, absolute respect and, and kindness and they've been very encouraging. And it's, it's great to have their back. I've been in touch with HBO again, just to make sure we can get the, the uh, written part of the guide out as well. And honestly, I'm really looking forward to it because again, for a while, I wasn't too sure I was going to do a mythic walkthrough. Uh, I think kind of one of the things that really sort of changed my mind especially uh, with everything that's happened recently. You know, as many of you know, I don't know if this site's going to be around this time next year, or at least if I'm going to continue making videos just because of all the whole apocalypse situation, um, the way YouTube has handled it. This is why I set up my Patreon site. It's why I set up the Mythic Tyrant store so that we could help counter this um, so that I could actually make enough money to continue making a living. And I finally figured out this. If for whatever reason I can't continue making videos next year, I want to have this under my belt. Mythic is what I started with. And just in recent weeks, I've started picking up, you know, conversations that were left off years ago with my Mythic community members. And that's where I started. And it's, it's so fun to go back and talk to those guys and, and think of strategies and work together to come up with new ideas. And it's been a lot of fun and it's a feeling that I've missed for a long time and it's good to have it back. Uh, it's mythic difficulty is pretty much my legacy in the Halo community and it, it would feel kind of weird if I ended up bowing out from YouTube and didn't do a Halo 5 mythic difficulty walkthrough. This is something I'm really looking forward to. I've been practicing it for a little while now and I hope you guys join me on this. I know it's not an easy journey, but 343 did make it slightly easier this time around because we now have the option to revive both, uh, you can revive your other teammates and they can revive you. When Mythic first came out or the concept was first uh, released, you know, Halo 5 first came out, the Iron Skull having that on not only meant that it got rid of all checkpoints, which again means you can't save and quit, haha. <laughs> but it also meant that revivals were not an option either. You know, I chatted with 343 a while ago about this. Again, this was, you know, back in 2015. I don't even know if, uh, actually I know she's not working there anymore, but you know, it was one of my main concerns. I was like, given the fact that the campaign is stacked so far against you as if you always have, you know, three other Spartans fighting by your side, 
the numbers reflect that and how the enemies fight you reflects that. Revive was there to help count, to be a counterweight. And so they eventually added it back in. The game does not count it as a death. Obviously it doesn't stop the game and it does make it a lot more balanced. It's something I approve of. And even the two people who have beaten the game on Legendary with All Skulls on, without deaths, without revives, agree that it's a better way to go because otherwise it's just a grind or you have to spend most of the time trying to escape the map just to advance in the mission and that's not how you play mythic that's not fun you know it's you need to be able to get creative at times and so i'm glad they did this it may, it's going to make mythic a little bit more easier a little bit more doable and it's going to be more accessible to people everywhere so they can just have fun and that's really the whole reason I created the guides to begin with, so, was so that anyone could beat this. It's the hardest challenge you'll ever face out there in a Halo game. And if you haven't already tried it, I highly recommend it. Again, my first guide for Osiris was just released yesterday. I don't have a weekly schedule for this because I don't know how long it's going to take for me to get to each mission. Obviously, Blue Team is the next one I have to do, and it was in my top 10 hardest Halo uh, campaign missions of all time and it really is even by my own community they say yes this is the arc of the long night of solace of halo 5 so i don't know how long it's going to take me i'm hoping to have it done by next week but you know i know i've got the support there and so thank you guys so much you know i hope it's something you're willing to try and i want to welcome you all with open arms to our community i'll go ahead and put a link to the official mythic difficulty for halo 5 thread or I should, let me back that up. The official Halo 5 Mythic Difficulty thread, I'll go ahead and put that in the comment section below. It's on Halo Waypoint. Definitely check it out. So that does wrap up this week's Q&A and video. What do you guys think about it? You know, what, what is your opinion on Mythic Difficulty? Tell me what you think about SPV3 for Xbox One, putting it on the marketplace. Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter at Mythic Tyrant. A link to my Twitter feed can be found in the description below. And if you want to become a premium member of the site for as little as $1 a month, get access to exclusive contests, our exclusive premium Discord, and get lots of rewards in the process and help keep this site going throughout 2018 so I don't have to quit, go ahead and check out my Patreon site. Trust me, any support you can add at all, even as little as $1, is a big help, and I certainly do appreciate it. And if you can't donate a dollar a month, I understand. This is why we have the Mythic Tyrant store that you can visit. We have dozens of items that you can choose from. USB drives, t-shirts, phone covers, wireless keyboards, you name it. And of course, the holidays are coming up, so it's something to keep in mind. So definitely check that out. And if you like this video and you want to see more, you want to stay up to date on all your Halo news, tips, tricks, and secrets, don't forget to click that subscribe button for more great content every single day right here on MythicTyro.com and click that notification icon while you're at it so you can be one of the first to comment because you'll know when the video was first released. You'll get that notification right away. Thank you guys so much for watching, guys and gals alike. I really appreciate it. I hope everyone has a great weekend. I will catch you all right back here next time. And as always, I'm the Tyrant. Signing off.